Hello! So, tonight we are exposing the false teacher, the false prophet, Torben Sondergaard, who is uh, very, very uh, present, very active on uh, the internet, on YouTube, uh, especially with his um, movie and his movement, The Last Reformation. And tonight we are exposing him as a false prophet because I think many people are deceived by this man. They think he is a man of God, but he is not. And the Bible warns us about this kind of people, this kind of uh, deceivers. In uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13, the Bible says, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and give thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. So here we see, there might be people who perform signs. They say, oh look, uh, this is a sign in heaven, or uh, this is a miracle healing. But the Bible says, and, and the Bible even says, this sign, whereof he spake unto thee, they come to pass, and the sign or the wonder come to pass. So those things may really happen. I'm not saying that those things are miracles, because I believe most, if not all, of those uh, so-called miracles performed by those false prophets are actually um, hypnosis and sorcery and uh, just magic tricks, basically. But even though even though those signs come to pass, the Bible says in verse 3, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So basically he says, yes, even though it come, it come to pass, even though the sign comes to pass, and this man is performing a lot of uh, uh, so-called healing, so what he says, and people are impressed by this, they are deceived by this. So those things, they really come to pass. And I, I believe those things are hypnosis, but they really come to pass. And the Bible says, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. And in verse 2, the the way we know that those people and the way we know that Torben Sondergaard is a false prophet is because in verse 2 the Bible says let us so that's what the false prophet is gonna say let us go after other gods which thou hast not known so basically the way we know that he is a false prophet is because he is preaching another Jesus from the Jesus of the Bible he is preaching another God that we haven't known. And the way we know God, the way we know the true God of the Bible, the true Jesus Christ, is by the Bible. So, because what Torben says does not match with the Bible, therefore we know that he is a false prophet. So what does he say? First, I have a quote from um, a video that he made. The video is entitled, um, Is Baptism Necessary for Salvation? And uh, we're going to put the, the link of, of the video in the description of the video. But um, in this video, he says, because he was asked by somebody, uh, and I quote, Do I believe that baptism is part of salvation? Yes, I do. Of course I do. This is what I read in the Bible. <clears throat> so right here he says, that he believes that baptism is part of salvation. <clears throat> and he says, this is what I read in the Bible. So, first of all, I'd like to know where he reads that in the Bible, because it's nowhere in the Bible. The Bible says over and over that salvation is only by faith in Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And then he says, uh, do I believe that baptism saves us? Yes, this is what I believe. So, he's really clear, and this man is it's so, it's so gross because he's, he's completely contrary to the Bible. He says, 
yes, this is what I believe. He believes that baptism saves. But the Bible is really clear over and over. It says, uh, for example, Jesus says in uh, John 6, 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So, <clears throat> he says, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. He does not mention baptisms. Baptism. Uh, over and over in the Bible, and especially in the book of John, he mentions faith, believing in Jesus. That's what saves us, not baptism. For example, um, in Romans 4, the Bible is really clear. The Bible says, uh, Romans 4, verse um, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So here we have somebody who doesn't work, but he believes on him that justifieth the ungodly, and his faith is counted for righteousness, even though he does not do any, any work. And uh, also in uh, Ephesians ver uh, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, very, very famous verses of the Bible, the Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And really, baptism is a work. That's something that we do. Because, because salvation is not of works. Salvation is only by, what, by works of God, by the work of God, by what Jesus did. And we just have to, to rely on that, to trust what Jesus Christ did to be saved. We, we, must, not, we, we must renounce to trust our own works. And uh, think about in, in times like, for example, in the Middle Ages where Baptists were persecuted and even killed for baptizing people, for baptizing people by immersion against the teachings of the Catholic Church. That was a, that was a, a work that was punished by death, with, with severe persecutions. So, <clears throat> how could you say that baptism is not a work? Because baptism is a work. That's something that you do. And the Bible says over and over again, we are not saved by, by our works. But, obviously, because that's obvious in the Bible, that we are not saved by works, and what the false prophet does, and what Torben, Torben does, is that he tries to uh, kind of drown the fish, or he wants to beat around the bush. And basically he's adapting the message to his audience, because he says, just right after he says that baptism saves us, he says, but, 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 it depends. And that's always the case with false prophets. They are always in a gray area. They never tell you things like they are. They always want to beat around the bush and they are never clear. So he says, it depends. So basically, according to him, it depends on your willingness to get baptized. Like for example, he gives that uh, ridiculous example of a Chinese prisoner in a prison who really repents whatever he thinks that means but let's say a Chinese prisoner repents and call on Jesus and wants to get saved but he cannot be baptized and Tobin says well I'm not saying that this guy is gonna go he's gonna go to hell because God is looking at the heart of this man and God knows that he this man would be baptized if he could but that's garbage, because the heart of man is deceitful. The Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So even though somebody in their heart, they are sincere about being baptized or following God, God, God himself knows that, that it's not true, because man may be sincere, but at the end of the day, man is not faithful. And I'm getting ahead of myself here, but... Basically, he wants to confuse people and stay in that gray area. He doesn't, he doesn't say 
either either yes or no. He says, yes, baptism is necessary for salvation, but it depends. Whereas the Bible says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible is always black and white. It, it has no gray area. But those false prophets are always in a gray area. Also, what they like to do is uh, they like to use Mark chapter 16 to, to say that baptism is necessary for salvation, but they twist the scripture. Mark 16 verse 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So what they say here is that they say, look, you see, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So you have to be baptized to be saved. But what they, they forget to, to read the second part of the verse that says, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So yes, if you believe and be baptized, you're saved because you believe. But what, what condemns you is your unbelief, the, the unbelief of the, the, the person. He that believeth not shall be damned. It, it's exactly like if you have a equation A plus B equals 1. And then you have A equals 1. So, yes, A equals 1. So you can, you can also say A plus B equals 1 when B equals 0. And that's, that's still true. You can also say A plus B plus C plus D equals 1 if B plus C plus D equals 0. And that's the same thing. You can, you can say, yes, he that believeth and, and is baptized shall be saved. But you can also say, he that believeth and uh, lives a, a pretty good life shall be saved, because that's true. As long as I, I'm not trusting in my good life to be saved, but that's true. You can also say, he that believeth and continue in sin shall be saved, because that's true. As long as I trust Jesus, as long as I believe in Jesus Christ, I, I can believe and sin and live a bad life and a sinful life like King Saul and I am saved because I believe. So this is, this is not, this is a stupid argument obviously but uh, that's what they use but this is easily debunked because what the criteria to go to heaven is faith in Jesus Christ. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned. Then um, then he says, uh, again to confuse you, later in the video he says, uh, the problem is not what saves, is who saves. And then he says, it is not a what who saves, it is a who who saves. And again, that's confusing because, yes, it, it's, not, it's not only a what who saves, but it's both. Because what does, what does save people? The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So it's both, both the Lord Jesus Christ, but you have to believe on him. Because he is the savior anyway, whether people believe it or not, whether they even believe on Jesus or think he exists or not, he is the savior anyway. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, the Bible says uh, about Jesus, um, For therefore we both labor and suffer, suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. So the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. So that means that He is also the Savior of those that don't believe. So yes, it's, it's a who that saves, it's Jesus Christ, but it's also a what, because he is the savior of all men, but it's not going to do you any good until you trust him, until you ask him to save you. And so it's also a what that saves you. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, 
and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So there is a if. You, you have to do something. You have to ask him to save you. That's it. And uh, then he, he says uh, in his video that... Because uh, he's still trying to confuse people in saying that uh, baptism is necessary for salvation, but there might be some exceptions. And for example, he gives the example of Abraham, who was not baptized, obviously, because there was no baptism in Abraham's time. And in order to say that Abraham was saved, Torben says that, and I quote, Abraham was faithful. So supposedly Abraham got saved because Abraham was faithful. Then he says about Abraham, I quote, he kept the commandments God gave him. And that's, that's complete works-based salvation. So according to Tor Torben, Abraham got saved because he kept the commandments God gave him. And that, that's complete garbage. That's obvious works-based salvation. Because what does the Bible say in Romans 4, verse 1? The Bible says, What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if... Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. So if Abraham were justified by works, he could boast himself, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? That, that, that's a good question, because we are quoting the scripture, and he is not. He's never quoting scripture in his stupid video. He's twisting scripture. For what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So Abraham did not get saved because he was faithful. He got saved <clears throat> because he believed that God was going to be faithful to his promise. And that's the same way we get saved. We don't get saved because we are faithful to keep the commandments. We, we get saved because... One day, we hear the gospel, we hear the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, and we believe that God is going to perform what, what he said he would do. And it is said um, at the end of this chapter, at the end of Romans 4, about Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. So why Abraham got saved? Abraham did not get saved because he was faithful. Abraham got saved because he believed that God was able to perform that which he had promised. And uh, in verse... Uh, 22, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. And that's the same thing for us. It was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So we don't get saved because we are faithful, because we're not. We get saved because we believe that God is going to be faithful. That's faith. And uh, to Tobin is preaching, is teaching a complete works-based salvation. He's not saved. He's leading a whole lot of people to hell. And, but he is gross. I mean, that, that's gross works-based salvation. It's really easy to debunk. And, uh, oh yeah, again, the, the pig is saying... And I quote, now we are here. So he's talking about uh, nowadays, this day, this, this day and age. Now we are here and we also need to be faithful with what God is saying to us now. Again, complete works-based salvation. And that's, this is a really easy to debunk works-based salvation. But many people actually, they think that they have to 
commit their life to Jesus, they think that they have to give their life to Jesus, or to uh, yeah, basically uh, agree to keep all the commandments and be faithful, but that, that's garbage, that's leading people to hell. If you trust your own faithfulness, you are, are not saved, because you are not trusting God, you are trusting yourself. But God is faithful. If you're, if you're listening to this and you are not sure about whether you're, you're saved or not, uh, really being saved is, is, is really, I mean, it's not even easy. It's a gift that you just receive. Just trust God. Trust what God said. In, in uh, Psalm 89, he makes a promise and he, he gives uh, an example of his faithfulness. In uh, Psalm 89, verse uh, thirty. For the Bible says, my covenant, that, so that's, that's God speaking, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. So that's the promise of God. God makes a promise and he's not going to alter what is gone out of his lips. That's why we're saved. We're saved because God cannot lie in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. So if you are somebody who is uh, listening to Torah bands under God, and obviously you don't know whether you're saved or not, just, I tell you, just trust God. Stop trusting your own faithfulness. Stop trusting your own good works. But Trust what God said, because he said, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing <clears throat> that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. So here he's talking about Christ and those who are in Christ by faith in Jesus Christ he says that they shall endure forever. Not because of us, but because of what he said, because of his covenant. And uh, so, again, later in the video, he says, uh, he gives the, the, that, that ridiculous example of a Chinese prisoner who uh, calls on Jesus, whatever that means, and uh, wants to get saved, but there is no water to be baptized. And here he is going to con con contradict himself and saying that God is able to take a little drop of water and pour it on the forehead of that Chinese believer and that would wash away their sins. So now he's contradicting himself because earlier he said that it's not a what that saves, but now he's saying that this little drop of water, God is going to use that little drop of water to wash away the sins of that man. So here he's contradicting himself, and that's garbage. It, and it just shows that he does not even understand what baptism is, because baptism is by immersion. The Bible is very clear about that. It's not a little drop of water. The, the drop of water doesn't take away any sin. The Bible says, um, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regen regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So what saves us is the washing of regeneration, but it's not by water. Water is just a picture of our the baptism is just a picture of our death, burial, and resurrection. Just like Jesus was, he died, he was buried, we go underwater, and he, uh, in, the, in the same like manner, in like manner as uh, he rose again from the dead, from the grave, we go out of the water. And uh, Col Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 is uh, really explaining that it says about us who believe on Jesus Christ that we are buried with him in baptism. So we are buried. It's not talking about a little drop of water on the forehead because we are buried with him in baptism. 
wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. So again, here it says that, that we are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, not through our own faithfulness, but through the faith of what God is going to do. That is to say, uh, raising us from the dead. So baptism is by immersion and that little drop of water, it, it means nothing. And uh, if the Chinese prisoner really believes on Jesus Christ, he's saved. But to Toben is not going to save any Chinese prisoner because he's a false prophet. And a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit, neither can a, a, a good tree bring forth evil fruit. And uh, Toben is, a, is an evil tree. He cannot get anybody saved because he's teaching a complete works-based salvation. And now to end, uh, to end this uh, video, I'm just going to give you a little icing on the cake, so to speak, because he's really making a fool of himself towards uh, the middle of the video. I'm not even going gonna, to gonna go to the to criticize the, the whole video because even at the middle of the video, he he's uh, trying to twist 1 Corinthians Corinthians chapter 9 where uh, the Bible says I mean Paul writes and uh, says he compared basically Paul he, Paul is comparing the Christian life to, to a, a race and he says uh, know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one received the prize so run that ye may obtain and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a, a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So here, Paul is saying, look, the Christian life is like a race. If you want to have crowns, if you want to be rewarded by God, you have to make efforts. You have to have discipline and you have to take up your cross daily and follow Jesus. That's tough. That's a lot of work. But that's talking about people who are Christians and who want to live a victorious Christian life. They have to make efforts. But uh, this, this false prophet, Tob Tobin, is saying that... Uh, Look, you, you have to run, you have to run. If you want to, if you want to be saved, you have to run. Otherwise, uh, you're going to be a castaway. But that's, that's complete garbage. So basically, what he's saying is that you have to run to be saved. Run. You have to work. Again, that's complete works-based work salvation. But he's completely twisting the scripture because here it, it's just talking about the Christian life. That is a race. And the Christian life is a race. But getting saved, getting saved is not a race. Getting saved is rest. Rest. It's compared to rest, not a race. The race is the Christian life. But getting saved is rest. But uh, people like Tobin and the people who are deceived by Tobin, they, they run because they don't have rest. They are not saved. So they think they have to run, but they are going to run He's running, basically, he's hasting to, to hell, basically, because he's running to hell. And uh, even the Bible says, and it's, it's kind of funny, because the Bible even says in Romans 9, verses uh, 15 and 16, about uh, 15 and 16, about what, what God says to Moses, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. So the Bible says, it's not, it's not because you run faster than somebody, it's not because you, you, have, you, you want it more than somebody, it's, it's not, that is not salvation. Salvation is by the mercy of God, and the mercy of God is in Jesus Christ only. 
it's not by it's not by running it's not to him that run but people who who want to run to go to heaven they're gonna run to hell and uh, people who follow this uh, this running fool are gonna end up in hell if they believe that they have to work their way to heaven